let's get right into it with our regular segment, Hits, Misses and Hold Fire. We're looking for a team that was a hit, a team that was a miss and a team that we're still not sure about. We've had three weeks so far. We've got a little bit of a form line, but we still need to see a bit more. Of course, the other member of Statchat Sports, Steve, out again, back-to-back -back weeks, missing in action. We may need to go to the top-up list and get a new, uh, get some extra talent on board to get us through these videos. But I'll cover for him this week with his hit, the Western Bulldogs. Tazza, they had a really good win last Thursday night. Stopped them from going 0-3. Much needed victory. They were right up against it. They really needed that. And yeah, got over the line in the end. Very inaccurate. At half time, it really should have been. Probably not sewn up, but it really should have been. Yeah, nine goals, 17. Not very impressive. BT, need to fix that up. But they'd be really happy with the contested possessions this week. Plus 25. Yeah, that's massive. That's where they lacked in the first two weeks. So they clearly showed dividends. Few changes as well, putting McRae, especially in that last quarter when the game was kind of on the line, chugging him to the half forward. Bailey Smith was run through the middle a fair bit more than just on the wing. So they've got all these players there that can rotate through. And Bontempelli, he's still not playing his best. So if he can hit some good form, fit. no, he doesn't look mm, it. He's not fit. Yeah, he he can't right. be. So if he can, you know, the second half season, if he can get that form, then they, they look the goods. They'll, they'll never going to go. Zero and three. Let's be real. We we said that in the last one as well. So eleven point margin. It was it was a lot more than that. They should have won by yeah. probably five six goals. And I think the most impressive part of not just this victory that they had, but the first three weeks, is the form of Tim English. Uh, Tazza, we were quite critical of English in our preseason video, but yeah, I think it was people were really starting to doubt whether that promise was going to come to fruition because he'd been given probably two or three years where this is his year. English takes the reins. English takes the number one mantle of the dogs. And it just never, never happened. Yeah, finally, we're seeing it. His work around the ground is just really good. It, he, he looks, he's the, the form ruckman of the competition. I mean, you've got the big dogs not really doing a hell of a lot in uh, Grundy and Gorn. English looks, looks the goods, but it remains to be seen whether Steph Martin, what effect does he have? Coming back into that team, uh, in my opinion, the dogs should run with English. Hundred percent. While while he's on that form, it sounds like the dogs really want him back in. I agree with you, Tazza. I think I think you got to keep Martin out of the team and roll with a hot hand. English is looking good. He can carry the mantle himself. No reason to change it. Even if they do bring Martin back in, English when he goes up forward, he he's by far the best mark out of all those ruckmen by far. But yeah, I, I agree. They they should just keep Martin out at this stage until unless something changes and they have to make bring him in but he, he looked really he's definitely the number one rock in the combat at the moment even if they go with the jordan sweet and maybe play a 75 25 split in the rock i think english needs to, to spend a good portion it can't be a 50 50 split i don't think you get enough out of english you don't get that run around the ground from any other ruckman you don't get it from martin i mean right. let's be honest he's getting on he's he's a good tap rock yeah you're not getting anything else from him Tim English, he had his career high in disposals and clearances on the weekend. So certainly in some pretty good form. BT, let's head your way. Your regular segment, your miss, a team that has let us down this week. Friday night, the showdown. Oh, oh, Port no. Adelaide. Oh. Port Adelaide again. <laughs> this is abuse. <laughs> it's I've well deserved enough. though, Tazza. It is. It is. Well deserved it is. abuse. Yeah. I know, I know we obviously didn't expect much from Adelaide, and that's why it's more of a miss. Who knows? Adelaide could push top eight. We don't know. It's so early. But we had Port Adelaide so high in the rankings at the start of the season. So this is the stat that was shocking. It's given up seven goals from stoppages. Seven goals. That is massive. And you could see it as well. That obviously fixed up the rebound 50s from the week before against Hawthorne, but then they just gave up these stoppage goals. So these midfielders, they're... They're lacking. They're lacking a lot in Port Adelaide. And they're very surprising yeah. given the mix that Port Adelaide have in their Tazza. I mean, you do you'd know full well as a Port Adelaide man. There was a lot of pressure put on those the the young guys, that young core in that team. And apart from Butters in one game, I don't think we've seen a hell of a lot from any of them. Dersma got dropped. Connor Rosie has done absolutely bugger all this season. Butters had that really good game against I mean, it looked good on the stat sheet, but it didn't convert to a, a win. They got 
an absolute shellacking from the Hawks, and that's that was the best game he played. These guys just aren't standing up. You got your wines and your bokes aim on to an extent, but there is no one standing out in that midfield. Where does Port Adelaide go from here? Have you seen anything redeeming in the first three weeks which gives you any sort of indication this team can turn it around? No, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> it's hard. To, it's Honestly, it's a hard watch. We've got a team that we all put out. Well, I think one of us didn't have in our top four, but most of us did. It was a consensus top four team. And they're sitting second last. Like I don't think you can find any positives in that. The one positive out of... The, the showdown was Marshall kicking a bag, but that's because he was playing on a guy of Port delisted and they ended up turning into a defender. You've got to be happy about uh, from Marshall, though. He was our man under the pump. We've been looking for something from Marshall for a good four or five years now. It'd be nice if he could show it against genuine opposition. I, I, I don't know if I'm asking for too much, but it is, it's the best I've probably seen him play. It's one shining light I could get out of, out of the game on the weekend. The one shining light for the rest of us stat chat boys is we had some pretty good feedback in the uh, in the message from our regular man, R. Dizzle, who was very critical of Port Adelaide and again calling for the tarps to come out. So <laughs> certainly a bit of entertainment for our Friday night. We appreciated that. Tazza, let's stay with you. Hold fire. Give us a team that we're still not sure on. We need to see a little bit more of a sample size to know what we're dealing with in 22. I think... As a group, where we're still hopeful that they can achieve things, but I think the media have kind of turned on them this week. And I've got Richmond sitting one and two. The media have seemed to have really gone to town. Yes, they gave up seven goals in the last quarter. It was eight goal to one quarter. Sixty-four consecutive points unanswered mm -hmm. for Richmond. That's yeah. that's not good footy. It's not. They are missing a few guys. They got Presti out. They got Martin out. They got Vlosten out. The Grimes, they lost in the third quarter. That was a huge turning point. And you thrust Gibkiss straight into the... I mean, he wasn't the the uh, the be-all and end-all back there, but he had a, a much more prominent role to play. And for a guy who's played three games, he got towed up. I, I, I wouldn't happen. be... Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the key position players take a long time. Whether this keeps happening and Grimes spends a lot of time out, oh, we don't know. There hasn't been any news on, on his injury. But I, I think... It's not all doom and gloom for Richmond yet. There's there's definitely a lot to like. Ralph Smith, his his emergence has been really nice. And down back and he he pushed forward for a goal as well. Just we can hold fire on the Tigers for a bit. Yeah, BT, it's an interesting one because we didn't know where to place this team in our season preview. I think half of us had to make finals, half of us didn't. The key factor that we said was injuries. If they have a clean run with injuries, they've shown over the last five years they're a premiership contender. If they don't, like they did last year out of the finals and didn't really look competitive. They clearly don't have that squad depth there because, like I said, when they won the grand finals, they had minimal injuries. So, And this year, they're missing key key players. But are, are we reading into their win last week too much? Because we obviously GWS aren't looking the best and they're playing at the MCG where they played terrible. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm hard against St Kilda. I have been, and they clearly <laughs> play very well. I, I didn't watch... One and two now. Yeah. One and two you are, BT. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't watch much of the game, but I, I was keeping up with the stats. They they clearly, ever since I gave them, gave them like a harsh bashing, they, uh, they picked they've it up. And they, they've you, responded. BT. They've listened. <laughs> and not, not, the, not the captain. He's uh, still still uh, harsh on him. He's, he's, he's gone. He's gone at the end of the season. I know we're on Richmond. I just don't know. I don't know because... We don't know what's happening with Dusty. There's still no news on him. Like we said, Vlost and Prestia. It's Re just Rewalt. These guys are getting on in age as well. So that's the thing. At least these Gibbs and Ralph Smith, as Taylor pointed out, at least they're getting games into these guys for the next few years. I think we read read into their win last week too much. And I don't think I don't think they're gonna make finals. The problem we've got with Richmond, their next four weeks is not gonna tell us anything. So they've got the Bulldogs at home, presumed a loss, Adelaide away. You'd think they'd probably win that against Adelaide. We're not super big on the Crows this year. Melbourne at home, that's a loss. And the Eagles away, they're probably going to win that given how poor the Eagles have been. So I can't see the next four weeks really giving us any more information on Richmond than we've already got. 